Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam and today we are going to be looking at Ahoy from Later Games. Ahoy is an asymmetrical dice allocation game on the sea. Players will roll their dice simultaneously and then each take turns by placing two dice onto their player board using actions as they do. Now, a player's goal to win the game is to collect and have the most fame by the end of the game. Fame is collected differently depending on the faction of choice. In a two player game, this game is essentially just an area control game with the sharks versus the mollusks, both essentially just trying to control regions by having the most pieces in them. And then at the end of each round, they're going to be scoring for which of those regions they control and how wealthy that region is, which is denoted by a dice placed in the center of those regions. Now in the three and four player game, the smuggler faction is introduced and these play both identically. So in a three player game, it would be the mollusk sharks and a smuggler. And in the four player game, it would be mollusk sharks and two smugglers. These smugglers will actually gain fame by picking up cargo from islands and then bringing that cargo to other islands that will match the suit. Now, when they successfully deliver the cargo, they will actually get a benefit on their player board, but will also increase the wealth of that region by one, which will benefit the area control faction and give them an opportunity to score more points throughout the game. Now, I do want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, which is going to be Leader Games. Leader Games is my favorite publisher in the business. They make amazing games with adorable artwork. They've got merch on their website, tons of cool stuff. And if you are interested in gathering anything from Leader Games, they have a special code that helps support my channel. I have that link down below. If you use that link to buy any product from the Leader Games website, you'll be directly supporting my channel here here and what I do. I would greatly appreciate it if you take the time to check out their store. And also thank you so much to Leader Games for sponsoring today's video. Now I am done talking about the sharks and the mollusks as if they weren't actual factions. And I'm going to give you a overview of the factions themselves, starting with the sharks known as the Blue Fin Squadron. Now the Bluefin Squadron have roamed these waters for decades, forcing order with their shot, sword, and bite. Now they will be gaining fame by controlling regions and will pressure their enemies by laying down patrols, attacking with their mighty flagship, or by building strongholds on islands. Now the squadron's patrols actually act as an extension of their flagship. When their flagship loads up their cannons, every single patrol will actually have loaded up cannons as well. When the flagship is ready to fight, so too are all of the Bluefin Squadron's patrols. They are straightforward to learn, but lean heavily on maintaining order of the sea, locking off sections for other players to not be able to cross, and keeping players away from hiring crew or gathering cargo with their strongholds upon islands that they dominate. If you are coming from Root, think the Marquise de Shark or ruler of the sea. Now the Mollusk Union is slightly less straightforward gameplay wise and is coming up from the depths to reclaim their ancestral home from the Bluefins. They also gain fame by controlling regions and do so by maintaining a supply of comrades that they must ready and then deploy onto the islands of the sea. By anchoring at islands, they are able to gain two comrades into their ready supply or place two comrades at that island. They will also have a hand of plan cards that can be used throughout the game, giving them a hidden edge that is secret from all of the other players. Sometimes it might be related to combat, sometimes related to spreading your comrades, and other times able to give you powerful ships to come aid your quest of the waters. This hand of cards is one of the elements that will take some mastery in order to play this union effectively. And then we have the smugglers who will only be controlling one flagship. If you're coming from a background of playing Root, does this sound familiar to you at all? As the smuggler, you will run blockades to bring luxuries and essentials to those with the most need or those with the most coin. You will gain fame throughout the game by delivering specific cargo cards. And as you deliver, you will be increasing the wealth of that region, which can often be used as a point of political discussion with the mollusks and sharks. If I'm going to drop off my cargo here, that's going to increase the wealth die at that region. And you have a very powerful amount of control at that region. And I don't really want you to gain that much fame for the rest of the game. Uh, and so, 
maybe I'm gonna go ahead and try and find a new place to deliver this cargo to. You're, you're gonna hear that kind of talk track from these smugglers quite often as the other players. And as a smuggler, you gotta get really good at talking like that to the other players. Now, on top of the fame that you get from delivering this cargo, you will also get a movement on your reward track, which will bring another added benefit. You can also gain a reward movement by having a victory in battle as the smuggler. You will also have a pledge mechanism, which is essentially an end game scoring where when you deliver cargo, you will secretly make bets on who will control islands matching that cargo's suit. This may swing those political discussions where if you see one of the sharks having really good control of a particular region, and it happens to be the skull suit, and you just delivered cargo that has the skull suit on the top left, you might wanna pledge that the shark is going to be in control of that island at the end of the game. Now, combat throughout the game is going to be nice and simple. Every player board will have a cannon section on it, and if you allocate dice to that section, you are essentially loading up your cannons, saying that if you meet enemy pieces on the sea, you will battle them. Now, when a battle commences, players will have the opportunity to lower their cannon dice down by any number of pips to add that amount to a die roll. Now, the Mollusk can sometimes play a plan card at this stage to swing the battle in their favor, but once both players have lowered their cannons, the higher amount will win. Now, when a player gets a battle victory, they will look on their player board because this is actually gonna show some of their battle victory reward options. Most of the time, it will include damaging your opponent's ship, which essentially allows you to take small damage tokens and place them on your opponent's player board, preventing them from actually being able to place a dice there until they use their own repair action or find some other way to repair their ship. Now, there are a lot of moments of conflict that aren't directly related to combat. Combat is the way that every player, smugglers, bluefin squadron, mollusk union, all of them can attack each other in order to slow each other down. But there are some other interactions that some of the factions have in order to slow each other down. The bluefin squadron can force players to avoid entire areas with their patrols because unlike other factions, when that flagship has those loaded cannons, so do their patrols. Trolls. The Bluefin also has an action on their player board called Bombard, where they can literally remove all of the Mollusk comrades from an island in their region. So if you are a Mollusk Union player, be aware of die rules of four or even five or even three, because something I didn't mention in the game, which I'm just gonna mention right now, even though it's totally a little bit late, is that you can actually spend coins that you gain from treasures in the sea in order to increase or decrease a die roll by that amount. So be aware of any Bluefin Squadron rolling something close to a number four, and if they have some gold coins, that is going to be a big yikes for you. Now the Bluefin Squadron can also build these strongholds on islands by having two of their patrols at that island. Doing this allows them to hire crew of that suit no matter what island they are at, and it also prevents other players from hiring crew at that island and smugglers from getting cargo at that island. Now, the Mollusk Union can slow down players by attacking them with their flagship or using their plan card. For example, as the Mollusk Union, you might play a sneak attack plan card, which allows you to remove two patrols from a region that has any of your comrades. Now, the smugglers can slow each other down by racing towards certain cargo that has islands that are already revealed on the map. One of the small ways that they can slow down the Bluefin Squadron is by taking out those patrols. And the reason why smugglers might want to do that is that if they do get a battle victory and you know let's say the patrols aren't very heavily defended with cannons then you might be able to pick up a battle reward victory for yourself in order to go up your track a really nice efficient way to get some nice extra fame or some extra abilities throughout your game as the smuggler and by using an action called negotiate as the smuggler, you can actually remove a comrade from an island that you are at and you also get an extra hire for a crew while you're at it. Now, I've already mentioned crew and islands and hiring, but I haven't really gone into how that really works. Throughout the game, there will always be three market cards revealed that can be added as crew by any player. They will have to anchor at an island that matches the crew's suit. 
Now, attaining crew is basically like building a tableau of cards, either with ongoing abilities or abilities that are only active with a dice slotted on them. Smugglers can smuggle these cards instead of adding them to their crew, and they will add them to their cargo, which will actually show which island they need to be delivered to. Building up your crew is just a nice way to spice up your faction's gameplay because these can add some amazing effects. Like take the Sea Witch, for example, where you'll be able to go off the edge of one side of the map and appear on the other edge. Abilities like this can swing the game in your favor and building up that perfect tableau of cards is one of the most satisfying things to do in Ahoy. Now the board starts with just two of these sea region tiles starting with a wealth of one each and over the course of the game players are going to spread off the map placing new tiles in the way that they choose. This is an exploration of sorts and the board can take up all these amazing shapes throughout the game. Now these different regions will actually have different terrain that will add special abilities sometimes or locations that your players can anchor to. Strong currents will actually make figures move in the direction of that current one space for free. Harbors will allow flagships to anchor at them in order to repair two damage or move any already placed die to their cannons. Fog will prevent any battles from happening at that location. Tailwind locations allow for a flagship to move to it by placing a matching die on their tailwind action, essentially allowing flagships to teleport across the map. Sandbars will prevent anyone from moving across that sandbar. Wreckage makes ships take one damage when moved here. Treasures can be found in the corner of some locations and players will gain that amount of treasure when flagships are anchored there. Islands come in one of six suits, just like crew. These give players the ability to hire crew of the same suit for gold or for dice, and also for smugglers to gain cargo. So as you can see, the board is going to come out and be wildly different every single game, taking on these awesome shapes, just depending on how much players want to explore. Some games I have played, I've played and the board was just a few small regions. We never really wanted to explore. We just took care of about six regions and just kind of fought over them, never spending an action to get out. And other games, we explored the map at the beginning of the game, building the biggest board we possibly could, all 11 or so tiles on the playing field. And it took quite a bit in order to get from point A to point B and protect this and protect that. In fact, I love how the board really does kind of determine different strategies for different players. Now, I really cannot not take a moment to talk about the components in this game. For one, the component quality is just as good as you'd expect from all the other games in Leader Games line. They, they never miss with this. The inlaid pattern design is beautiful, just like always with these games. They have double layered player boards. Even the region tiles are double layered, allowing the wealth die to be placed snug in the center of it. If you look at all of the meeples in the game, they are adorable and very aesthetic. I really, really love the flagship of the Bluefin Squadron containing a shark face in there and also a lot of the other ships that go along with the Mollusk Union, the Cutter, for example, having that adorable claw kind of coming out of it. It's just awesome. Looking at these meeples and components are wonderful. And the fact that you're gonna get everything shown here Everything shown here you get for $40 is incredible to me that they were able to keep it at such a low price. Now the art is once again top notch. Kyle Farron never misses here as well. I really particularly love looking through these crew cards and just going through and, and, and looking at all of the very creative ways he was able to make these animals uh, pirates, these sea creatures. It's just amazing artwork and aesthetic throughout the game. So really, no misses on the design or component quality of this game. It is all top notch, as you would expect from anything that Leader Games creates. Now, Hoy is a game that is coming up after all of these other asymmetric games. And if you know this channel at all, you'll know that I am a huge fan of asymmetric game design. These are my favorite types of games. It's one of the reasons why Leader Games is so important to me, why I love their games so much. Now, if we're coming from 
leader games. You know, you you love leader games and you're kind of looking at this game as a potential buy for you. Keep in mind that this is going to be less asymmetric than both Vast and Root. It is a bit under those two. Vast having completely separate victory conditions where the dragon has to escape the cave and the knight has to kill the dragon and the goblins have to kill the knight. That game operated differently for each player position and was super, super asymmetric in that way. And then they came out with Root where it was a race to 30 victory points, but every single faction gains those victory points in a different way. And now we have Ahoy, which is a lot simpler to play and easier to operate than both the other titles because everyone is run by that same mechanic of rolling their dice at the beginning of a round and then taking turns placing two dice doing actions on their player board. A lot of those actions are going to be the same actions with only a few of them giving them that unique flavor. However, it really does feel very different from playing the Bluefin Squadron and the Mollusk Union and the Smuggler. All of these factions have very different pulls and goals throughout the game that they're trying to achieve and all of them can kind of get in conflict with each other in different ways throughout the game. Now it does kind of surprise me that they opted to do two Smugglers within this game because one reason why I think they might have done it and one reason why I think it is great for starting off in this kind of asymmetric game design is that you can give two players the smugglers and they will play the exact same. And so if you have a player that's learning the game that kind of wants to be not on the forefront of the area control conflict, you can have an experienced player playing one of the smugglers and a player that's brand new to the game playing the other one and they can actually watch each other and that player who's less experienced can learn how to play very easily. And just a note, the Bluefin Squadron is substantially easier to kind of get a hold of and play well just right off the gate as opposed to the Mollusk Union. The Mollusk Union is going to take quite a bit to kind of get and 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 figure out, but I love that because their plan cards are so interesting and, and using those at the right time really does define your gameplay as the Mollusk Union. If you're playing this game for the first time as a two-player game, I think that the two-player experience is really good. However, the one thing is that in the two-player game, it doesn't have that magic of smugglers naturally increasing the wealth of different regions. Instead, in a two-player game, you're going to be passing back and forth the opportunity to just turn a die up by one pip. And it's definitely a lot more thematic and interesting to have at least one smuggler in the game. And so just to give some final thoughts, Ahoy is a lot easier to kind of play and get into than any of the other games that are asymmetric in their own line. This is a perfect starting point and you could even go from here and move to something a little bit more asymmetric if you wanted to going over to Root and then going from that over to Vast. Now you kind of got that perfect lineup. It's such a great way to get people into this really, really amazing genre of board gaming asymmetric game design. I think Ahoy does this perfectly and I think it's very, very well done from the art and the components to the game rules being easy to learn. But have you played Ahoy? What do you think about this game? Is this something that you're going to pick up? Did this video help you decide whether this game's going to be right for you? Please drop some comments down below. Let's have a discussion there. But that is it for Ahoy, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. What blows on the breeze? What name so fine? The greatest captain. Dead or alive, I've sailed these seas for a decade or three. If you've got what I want, then I'm coming for thee. You've heard of me, of this I'm sure. Load your cannon shot till you feel secure. It won't save your hide, it won't matter a bit. All your sixpence and pennies, I'll take them and quit. There once was a land upon the sea where one and all could call themselves free But when they came they burned our ships, they took our rum, had nary a sip But soon enough all oh, they'll find out If you mess with us you'll get knocked in the snout In the snout
shark is on our swords as we ride the tides Cause all around our enemies they plot and they hide But when we find them, then what'll we do? We'll bring them on board and we'll cook a stew Oh, the table is set, the knives are sharp Let's make a meal of a mollusk heart Oh, let's make a meal of a mollusk